the Rhine Stadium Dusseldorf, they come to celebrate Europe's finest football. The cream has reached the top. Eight teams, two groups of four. Now a final fortnight for one country to reach the very pinnacle. Not only a whole continent, but all the world is queued to pass judgment. The speculation, the ceremonies are almost done. And the overtures clear the stage for the dramas to unfail. Home advantage is a two-edged sabre. Familiar fields and atmosphere is sure. But as eagerly as they come to praise you, with equal readiness, you can be buried. So on Franz Beckenbauer, West Germany's manager, the scrutiny falls most sharp. The youthful Italians, virile and keen, are first to meet the host at the opening party. Reputations are on the line. Old ones will founder, new ones will be forged, like Jürgen Klinsmann's. Will the cultish daring of this young man carry him too wide-eyed into the defence's cruel and well-knit web? Or will the next two weeks be proof that he is already master of his own raw, exuberant potential? An even weightier onus on established men, like Germany's battling captain Lothar Matthias, who must inspire and harry and nag. Even from a distance, the opera sounds as sweet. Mancini, his first goal for Italy in 14 games. The gods reward the patience, and the thanksgiving is to last over four minutes. West Germany's whole tournament is under threat. Almost at once, the Italians are penalised. For what? Goalkeeper Zenger has taken four steps with the ball. The fat is in the fire, and a hole is in the wall. Bremer stays cool. One each. Tension evaporates. Indeed, it's as much as either side could have hoped for. West Germany's tournament is off and running, and the team, calmer perhaps, move on to their industrial stronghold at Gelsenkirchen. Red-shirted Danes and their throng of supporters are waiting. Rudy Fuller. His all-round talents made him the toast of Europe. Then injuries and lack of confidence. Is the old panache just a ghostly memory now? Klinsman close. The Terrier Lipowski snaps and yaps. The Danes are conceding midfield. Fuller, no. Klinsman, yes. <laughs> Germany is really beginning to warm to young Klinsman. Still, he 
charges on into the cannon's mouth. But when looks out, it stays out. Goal aggregate could be crucial. The darting Frank Milf will replace the despairing Fuller. At once, Mill hit the post. Denmark racked, but still not ruined. Survive again. Fervent prayer might be the only answer. Still, Denmark hangs on. The Germans mount their final bombardment. And at the very last, Litvarski's corner is met in a blare by the wispy Olaf Tom. The little man seals the night, his last on this home patch before his transfer to Bayern Munich. Stadium in the Bavarian capital, the next crucial mix is tossed into the melting pot. Spain are ready. There will be no pushover for the Germans, for whom full air is restored for one final chance. Beckenbauer has promised we are getting better and better tonight. We will win handsomely. Spain's Vasquez has other ideas. Ooh. Spain are full of tension, skill and menace. Coiled and eager, young fighting bulls. Michel is one of the tournament's genuine creators, but an artist who enjoys the hairy barely, a marked man, a marksman, but a steely marker too. still plays for his international life. Perhaps the thoroughbred has really turned into a mongrel. Now let Barsky. Klinsman. The apprentice salutes his mentor. Fuller has repaid the manager's faith. And the rest of Germany is sitting back to enjoy the evening. Not so much enjoyment, but always persevering grit from Matthias. Resolute, blinkered, almost heroic, he steams forward.
a sublime back heel and Fuller is himself again West Germany are surely in the semi-finals Matthias has no doubts but his manager still frets Bakiro, the little bull Spain nobly are not done for yet. Victor! Time is running out in wounded, rueful despair. just over Spain know they are done for now time only to remind Germany of their presence and one of their names heading for home and for West Germany happiness is heading for the semi-finals <laughs> mind Spain has offered the tournament colour and no little swaggering class traditional rhythms from the elegant Michel against poor Denmark. And the repeat at Frankfurt against Italy would have put Spain through to the semi-finals. Here was another effervescent match full of colour and wit, Latin fires and chivalries. without their stalwart captain Camacho and without him plugging holes the Italians Donadoni here increasingly forced defenders into mistakes Mancini continues to prod and probe with his usual Tyro's enthusiasm No luck. Alta Belli replaces him. Slower legs, but a far wilier head. At once the veteran dummies. The rampant Viali's precision steers Italy into the semi-finals. part of the forest of flags the English are massed in huge banks the second group of four begins with an intriguing domestic tie a British Isles Cup final England versus the Republic of Ireland the Irish jigs as ever are full of carefree gaiety in the face of impending doom they are given no realistic chance they have not beaten England for 40 years Still, whatever the result, it's a day for laughter and celebration.
in faraway Dublin hearts are in the trim. Aye, sure, let's just give it a crack, lads. And at once, blesses and savors, the beginning is the end. Yes! Aldridge. Houghton! Only Houghton can really believe it. But if you can, Shilton can. Lineker is England's man to answer the cheek of the Irish. Speed and timing have brought him 26 goals in just 32 internationals. Class will surely tell. goal begins to measure out his answer. Lineker still on the charge, and still the sandbags are always green. Now Waddle. The truculent Beardsley. Each England attack dies like a wave on a green shore. In Dublin, they can only pray that Boner's athletic nerve and luck will see it through. England's bench seems resigned. Their players forlorn and jaded. The Irish, who play with them for the same clubs, week in, week out, are getting fresher by the minute. Joy unconfined. Ireland have set the group and the championship alight. And ignite too, anticipation for England's meeting with Holland. Shilton is fully aware the Hullet's bouquet is the extent of Dutch generosity. For Holland too have lost their opening game against the Soviets, and the loser here will certainly be eliminated. As Shilton celebrates his 100th cap, it is the chastised English forwards who set off with the keener verve. Lineker, off the post! Safe. Rude Hullet, the Dutch captain. He cranks Holland back into the match, but England are determined to show their mettle this time. Van Basten, Hullet's lieutenant with the liquid stride. Imperceptibly, might the match be turning under Hullet's searching orchestrations? fraying slightly at the edges, for Shilton's hectoring has begun. Indeed, his defenders might be more scared of their goalkeeper than the Dutch.
Tuttle's kick splatters against the post. England twice denied. At once, Holland. Pull it toe poke. Van Basten. Clinically done. Tremendous. Some centenary party. England reckon they should have been leading. There's a lot of the game left, and their response is typical of their forging captain, Brian Robson. Yes! 1-1, one, one, in the balance again, all to play for. A draw is little use for certainty's sake, but the harder you press, the more you are exposed. Van Basten again, 2-1. Can even he sense the game is up? Suddenly relaxed, a calmer shade of orange, playing not frenetically for today, but for the testings to come. Might these really be the heirs and more than spirits of Johan Cruyff's Dutch team of the 70s? England a punch drunk even before Van Basten hits his third. England routed. Three, and he only just made the team. Even post-mortems are worthless now, but the press will hold them scathingly before they turn to consider the manner in which Holland have lit up the championship. For Barnes and England, just tears for souvenirs. While amazingly in Gelsenkirchen, it will be the Irish who still control the destiny of the group. Holland are up and flying, but a draw here, and Ireland are sure to move on. Good humours suffuse the lovely day. It might just be the stage for Rudd Hullet.
McGrath, a post. Holland almost caught cold like the English way. The Dutch are edgy. Captain Dreadnought calms them. Fastidious on the ball, but always persevering. Always on the run, in the action, hatching schemes, dispatching. His bony, bonny vigour carrying the match back to Ireland. Bouters, boner off his line. McCarthy, still the Irish raise their game. Newton. Bonus safe. In a trice it ended. From nothing, Cooman shot glances off Keith's head and bubbles apologetically, spinning wide at the brave boner. The goal stands. Holland are through. Ireland have reached the end of their rainbow. These are not swapped, sweaty shirts to be sold on, but kept at home and laundered proudly in memory of an opponent's honest day's chivalry. And autographs? Well, they're cherished too. But all generous romanticism is banished from Dutch thoughts as they head for Hamburg in their semi-final with the host nation. Holland have a mission to fulfil, a long-time pledge to themselves and history, and they flock across the border to put their destiny to rights. Holland, rampaging favourites, were beaten here in Germany by the host of the 1974 World Cup, a defeat branded on the memory. Their manager then, as now, was Renus Mickles. Holland have a score to settle for Nichols, and the rhythms beat out the insistent message, this one for vengeance. Everybody has to see this one. There is much to relish and savour in the golden evening sunlight. Van Basten, now lordly, prances into his stride. Immel, proudly defiant. Beckenbauer, still somber, still suited. Hergut, Germany's bastion. searches and probes. Hergit's thigh is badly damaged. The team must be rejigged. 
Will this turn the match? Half-time, Holland's sharpness makes all the problems seem Beckenbauer's. Frank Reichardt continues to be the defender of the championship. Matthias to take it. Matthias does it his way. Brooklyn so close. The Dutch up the tempo. So does Paul Fuller. Holland must concentrate on their football. Baston is flawed. Matthias surges forward. Van Brooklyn protests. The minutes are ticking away on Mikkel's dream. Baston seems surprised. Bremer tells Immel go left. Ronald Koeman does not oblige.
Just a quarter of an hour left. Now, now we can do it. Everything to play for. A helping hand, Kuman and Fuller are friends again. Germany mount their last thrusts. Off the line, Vallenberg. Surely it's extra time. Van Basten, yes! There were just 75 seconds left. An old man has surely secured his revenge. <laughs> Ecstasy, when as overwhelming as this after such a finale, needs agony as its brutal counterpoint. You cannot have one without the other and Beckenbauer's lofty dignity in defeat, and that of his whole team, is exemplary. We had some bad luck, he said, but Holland's zest and individualism deserved to carry them through. Man to man, said Beckenbauer, he was very happy for Remus Mikkel, who had given so much to the world of football. Such nobility in the vanquished marked the whole championship. But there were other tunes to dance to before Holland would know their opponents in the final. After the courageous Irish had held them to a draw, the Soviet Union needed to beat England to reach the other semi-final. The white-shirted English were still pale and dazed, and inside three minutes, Hoddle lost the ball. Alenikov! What's Russian for thank you very much? England was swamped. Rats. Mikhailachenko! <laughs> Pasulko added a third. But England's blushes and the Soviet counter-attacking have not dented Italian confidence as they throng to Stuttgart four rainy days later for the second semi-final. <laughs> Convinced that with Beckenbauer's Germans eliminated, the path to the very trophy itself has now opened up to them. The Soviet Union had little support to save history, but they were the first winners of this prize back in 1960. Lobanovsky, the Russian manager, had seen his team well beaten by Italy earlier this year. All his new strategies, he says, are based on that defeat. Soviets begin as if they've learned the lessons well. Pratatov on the attack. The Italians defend en masse. <laughs> Elena Kov to Pratatov. He threatens all the time. <laughs> the Italians attack. Giannini finds Viali in space. Viali shoots high.
Zavaroz, the playmaker. The number nine is feared by the Italian bench. Elena Cobb soars. Brazy on his knees is booked. The rain unceasing. If anyone, it suits the Soviets better. Far more used to slithering surfaces. The Italians prefer the sun on their backs. Zavarov is crowded off the ball. Tempers flare, Ancelotti and Gotsmanov. In semi-finals, somehow there's always more at stake, more thunder in the air. Too late now for Lobanovsky to hear a playback. Mancini. Giannini. Dasayev. Captain Dasayev is the tournament's top keeper. Half time. All square. up the tempo. threatened on the break. How can a man put up with it? The rain is relentless. And so now are the Soviets. Zavarov, clear. Tatasov, yes! Simply, clinically done. Nothing to be said, even by Zenya. To their credit, Italy rallied with spirit. But even as Russia are harried, the experience and organization prevails. The Italians are the youngest side in the championship, 
The Soviets, the oldest, they have sat on two goal leads before. In truth, Europe's great traditional counter-attackers have been beaten at their own game, and all Italy knows it. So now the Dutch know who they have to play. Six are out, just two to go. Holland versus the Soviet Union. An intriguing collision of football styles and cultures. The Russians precise, honest, organized. The Dutch colorful, worldly and spontaneous. The Olympic Stadium is ready. Football's heavyweight championship of Europe. The Soviets, old hands, are fast from the blocks, totally undaunted at being the underdogs. All the early workers Van Brooklyn's. Elena Kov to Belanov. Holland's first round tormentor is back from injury. Zavarov. A long pass to Belanov. He controls it superbly. Litovchenko wastes a clear chance. Free kick, pull it, tipped over the bar. Pull it, heads out. Elenikov plays Van Basten on side. Pull it, scores! to regroup and come on and on. <laughs> Elenikov strives to make amends. Pulitz himself clears.
under pressure. Reichard clears. Suddenly, Muren deep. Van Basten. Unerring, a goal for history. Of his five great goals, the greatest. goalkeeper would have touched it. <laughs> Belenov, the post. Oh, so close. Not to take it. Advice from Erwin Koeman and Muren. Celebrating early. That's the end. They come on at the end like a storm on the dikes. They are irresistible. It is unbelievably Holland's first ever international prize in the game's history. the captain of the kings. Renus Mickles, for many Europe's finest manager. Now, no one will argue. Chancellor Cole and Jacques Georges, President of UEFA. The Holy Grail. Europa Meister. The vanquished, as ever, dignified and gracious. They know the better team on the day prevails. And they are proud that they have contributed a crucial part to an afternoon, a fortnight, a whole championship that was memorable for its skills and its chivalry.
in sport simply by saluting the deserving winners. You simultaneously acknowledge the part played by every loser. On afternoons such as this, everyone is the richer. Everyone, in fact, a winner. As Marco Van Basten, the player of the tournament, would readily agree. Thank you.